So interesting kind of uh, career development for me because I knew what I wanted to be from a very young age. I wanted to play basketball. It, it modeled my entire childhood. I'm the youngest of nine children. I have five sisters and three brothers, and so basketball to me was uh, it was it just clicked. I loved it. I love and I love the work. So when I stopped playing basketball, I was 30 years old, about to turn 30, and I didn't have any practical experience. You know, I didn't know what it was like in the office. And so through some some relationships that I had developed, I kind of just went to, like just put me in front of successful people, so I can ask them what their life is like. Dave Martin was a huge influence on me, um, who's still a partner and, and still a friend of mine, because he opened his whole world up to me. So it allowed me to develop these relationships across these many, many different you know, industries, business models, lifestyles, you know, just kind of this crash course education. I love the journey. Uh, and I remember my dad always just saying it. Like, I try to tell my kids the same. actually done a lot of work recently um, here in the office about communication styles and social styles. You know, everyone's a little bit different. I'm definitely much more expressive than other people in the office. I, I lead with my heart. Um, you know, we have this, a few people that are very detail-oriented, which is a nice complimentary skill set. Uh, definitely both. Definitely both. I think um, uh, we talked about earlier social styles. So everyone's going to lead a little bit differently. Um, I think, you know, if maybe the, the leadership's a little bit on the art side, or management would be more on the science side. Like, it would be, you know, because there's still the, the practical mechanisms of, of one, social interactions, but it's two, business setting and, and So I think there's, um, there's a little bit of both. Um, you know, for me, it's it definitely more, I guess, art, because I'm more relational, and I'm more, um, uh, you know, there's more emotion kind of driving how I, and more stomach kind of instinct about, ooh, I don't know about this or that, where I can't necessarily explain what that means. I just know, like, that's not settling well, so there must be something I need to look into a little bit deeper. Yeah, I think, I think there's a little bit of both, because there's gonna, always going to be someone who, you know, before they know they're leading, someone's falling, right? You know, it's yeah. not like you set out to lead somewhere, but you kind of, sometimes you kind of look around like, oh, people are kind of, looking to me to make a decision, you know, and I'm not saying me, but the, the grander, you know, looking to someone to make a decision. So I think that those are kind of, there's some type of charisma that's probably implied there. Um, but I think, you know, really if someone sets out, you can learn the skills, but it's that habit building, you know, day in and day out. Um, you know, I'm not sure if one is easier than the other, because um, even with the charisma, you still got to have substance. You know, you, you may get your foot in the door, it may be a little bit easier to have that conversation with that stranger across the room in the networking environment, um, but you still gotta have substance, and you gotta have follow through, and you gotta have integrity, and you gotta have kind of these intangibles, um, or else you get found out. You just have so much more choice where it, it makes every decision that much more depth to it. Um, I think the other thing is time management. I think that that's one I know I struggle with and I've tried to work really hard to improve the habit there. In a lot of ways it can freeze you, you know, because you don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so, but then having the courage to step and go like, we're gonna go, we're gonna try this one and, one, and then saying, hey, I messed up, we can, now we're gonna go this way. Certainly the fact that all those decisions need to be made and the time management piece is only gonna probably get worse, I think is probably something leaders will have to, you know, continue to always be a challenge. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of what people in leadership is, they assume people know things around them, right? Because in here, like, I kind of have an idea of a vision, right, in my mind about what it looks like. But maybe I don't communicate it to the interested parties that are, you know, that their work is tied to that ability to be um, open um, yet direct. So what it boils down to is the challenge of communication, you know, and, and how, how leaders communicate, you know, to the team, uh, you know, one, what the vision is, two, what the objective is, and then three, the path we're going to get to accomplish the objective. Uh, I think integrity would be a big one, you know, and then I think you got you to gotta have that habit, you know, you got to be a, a lifetime learner, you got to have that habit to be able to continue to learn and push forward. 
my big thing, um, well, one of my big things is taking risks, like having the courage to take risks. I think one of the great lessons you learn from sports is the ability to fail and just kind of be uncomfortable. You know, live outside your comfort zone kind of expands your horizon. There's no, there's no shortcut, right? Like anything else, as you develop skills, there's no shortcut of like, you don't do it one time. You do it every day. You know, you kind of, you put yourself in these situations where, you know, you're, you're forced to, to think of something different. You're forced to, to communicate in a way that's different. Um, you know, I, I read some books recently on the ability to be vulnerable. Because when people are uncomfortable, it mad immediately. Guard goes up, like, oh, I don't have to network. You know, I can go into whatever your defense mechanism is, it goes on full bore. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the ability to just say, hey, I don't know. Like, I, this is kind of uncomfortable, but I'm going to try it anyway. Something new. Or, gosh, I'm not the smart person in this office. I'm not even close. But if you can engage with the smart, you know, the smarter people, and you can find ways to, to make that connection so that, you know, the organization moves forward, that's a form of leadership. Kind of, you know, because we're such a small staff, we're definitely multiple hats across the board. And so Bailey Neelan's across the all. She's our brand, kind of brand director, strategy, business development. Chad Smith, he's our operations manager. He does all the volunteer. Rob Davis is our site manager. And so he does all the logistics around the site. And then Kelly Riley here um, is kind of the center field. She's the, the office manager. Gift Marlowe sits back in the corner. She's our program manager, but she has all the registration for Acton. We just added this year Shaniqua Nilla, so she came in as another center field. And you know, for this event, because there's so many people, it takes so many moving parts from police and fire to the city of Spokane to the streets department to the park and all that construction going on to the night, all the sponsor relationships, deliverables, and stewardship. To all the vendors that are trying to, you know, beverage tents to the, our own store. I mean, we have we pop up the food fest store and we'll do a. It's a huge weekend, and so um, you know, all that stuff is uh, it all just comes out of the office. It's just all it just does. For me, um, it comes down to being physically active and eating, just taking care of myself. Um, two, I got a really, really understanding family, um, and then you have a good team. Like you know, you have great great friendships in the staff and certainly some of the volunteerism that we're all in it together you know so you know you're, you're pulling weight for them and they're pulling weight for you and um, even when it's stressed uh, you kind of have an understanding that you're not stressed because of uh, an interpersonal thing you're stressed because of the task at hand the responsibilities so it's kind of just having that perspective on where the stress is coming from um, and then being really really open and honest about uh, you know either addressing how to address it um, and making sure that which doesn't happen all the time, but not taking it out on the wrong things. I think enthusiasm is contagious. You know, I think we have a, a number of people, we've done actually done a lot of work recently um, here in the office about communication styles and social styles. You know, and everyone's a little bit different. So we have a resolution in place, um, and that stuff goes one on one. The last thing I think that would, it really hurts culture is when you're talking to me about you. You know, and I understand that at some point that comes to that because there may be, maybe you've tried three or four times to bridge it and it just hasn't. Now you're asking for a third party kind of help mediate or facilitate that, that reconciliation. Um, but it's got to start with there. And our group's unique because they all have, you know, buy into the idea of Hoopfest. I think we have a ton of history. You know, you have, the, you know, for example, our founder is still on our board of directors. You know, we have some folks in our operating committee, which is kind of our working board, if you will, um, that have been here since day one. I mean, there's a ton of pride and ownership and autonomy in what Hoopfest has become. I had a, a great entrepreneur here locally, John Bryant, who's the owner of No Library. Um, he, he met with us last week as on a sponsorship, and I, I just love his energy so much. Um, but what he, he said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote him here, is he said, Hoopfest moves culture, right? We're basketball. We are culture. Like when you talk about a city game, an urban game, and all the, the, the tentacles it has through popular culture, like a lot of it can be drawn directly back to the game of basketball. Hoopfest is the game of basketball. So how cool is that? So when you talk about innovation, uh, you know, it, that is our job. So Hoopfest turns 28 next month. We're still very entrepreneurial. Like you're constantly trying through colors, through designs, through marketing, through messaging, through branding, 
um, you know, even through technology on our side because we own proprietary technology because you can't buy it, something off the shelf that schedules 14,000 games on a weekend. That has had to have been built for HoopFest. And then all the associated infrastructure to support that has been is mind-boggling. I had no clue what the, that challenge looked like when I, when I started. Well, one, it would be the mentorship. Um, you know, we talked about Dave Martin, Bill Robinson, who's a former president of Whitworth. I've been working with him a lot. Um, because of my history professionally, there's a, a good network of, of folks that I can kind of, you know, lean on. Um, you know, a lot of reading. I, I enjoy reading books. I enjoy, I enjoy the leadership thing um, as far as studying. I think it has. I think we've really pushed, because one of it, with complete honesty, was self-preservation. Because everyone said, what do you do the rest of the year? Or that's the coolest job ever. you got the summers off. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> this is more than a full-time gig. This thing is crazy. Um, and so I, so when I joke about self-preservation with the idea of this Hoop Fest 365, that's where it was born. Like, we are here 365 days a year. So one of the things that we tried to do is really highlight the Hoop Fest, the organization, versus Hoop Fest, the event. When I first started, there were two, um, Spokane Hoop Fest and Spokane AAU, those were two separate business entities. And so we did a really a lot of work on changing the culture at the board level to recognize us as an organization. And so we, we merged those two entities, um, which I think is really changing the culture of what um, Hoop Fest is recognized, at least internally, where our, our conversation isn't about the, we can get out of the trees and start looking at the forest. Um, and so I'm really, really proud of that one because I think it's what's necessary. And I think for Hoop Fest to continue to make the next step to, you know, to sustainability, to, um, you know, economic impact, to size and scope and breadth of the organization, that was a little, that was a layup we had to get done. The idea of taking risks, courage, and the willingness to fail. I think those are huge, huge things. Because especially in leadership for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to make every, do everything right. And it's impossible. It's, no one's gonna make every, no one is. At least no one I know, maybe some. I bet even Bill Gates would say he made some mistakes sure. along the way. Um, and probably more so than, you know, than most people. Um, and so I think in that leadership role, you really gotta, you know, one, you gotta understand the business. You gotta do your audits. You gotta, you gotta really dive into the nuts and bolts of the business itself, the numbers, your processes, your your systems, your your infrastructure, um, certainly your the human capital. You know, you got to understand people's strengths and weaknesses. But those, to me, are just the um, like that's the trees. To me, that's the trees. Uh, at the same time, you got to be you got to be willing to put yourself out there. You got to take risks. You got to be willing to fail, and you got to be you got to be able to pick yourself back up and make another decision. You got to have fun with it. The whole thing is, is uh, the whole thing's meant to be fun. Leadership, your job, your daily -day life. Life is meant to be fun. You know the whole saying it only makes you stronger. It's better than that. You gotta enjoy the ride because it's just a ride.